Hello everybody. Welcome to your lecture number four on the uh, series of the videos that I'm putting on YouTube. So again, my name is Deepak Sharma. I'm the instructor for the ACC G204. So I actually prepared this, uh, this uh, lecture today, especially for the students who are struggling to use Sage 300 installed on your computer. And I see a lot of students sending me emails with a lot of issues that, that they're coming across and they're not able to install the software. So I came up with the one solution that's available for you if you're a student at Humber College. So this is uh, this video is uh, is intended for the students who are the student at Humber College for ICC T204 course for my summer 2020 semester. So Humber has uh, actually created uh, this AppStream website, which I have shared you guys on a Blackboard and also the exercise that I'm posting online as well. This has a link for this uh, for this uh, web page that Humber is uh, is offering. So with this, Humber is uh, giving you guys at the access to the software uh, using the online streaming application. So so uh, so the uh, this exercise uh, lecture number four is focused on setting up the company. So this will actually summarize chapter one to four, the one that you covered in the chapter by using a different company file. So in this exercise, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the application. So you don't need the say 300 installed on your computer. And if you students who wanted to do this stuff on your computer using the say 300 that you have, for you, you have to install the say, uh, uh, create these companies files on your computer. And if you don't have it, uh, if you wanted to use your own uh, uh, company file, if you still wanted to use this application, you can still go ahead and use the application as well, so you don't need to create the database file. So, so this this chapter, this lecture is going to set up the company file. We're going to set up the GR module, which focused on chap lesson two. Then we're going to create chart of accounts, which focused on lesson three. And once the chart of accounts are created, what we're going to do is we're going to enter the opening balances, which is lesson number four. So, so if you are one of the students who have been struggling to get the Sage 300 installed, uh, you still need to listen to the uh, to the lecture that I have posted. And if you have done it already, great. And uh, you still need your test book because you will be looking at the test book to see more detail of these exercises. But now, because you cannot do this, uh, uh, these company files that we're doing uh, as we're going through each week, what you're gonna do is you're gonna practice <coughs> excuse me, you're going to practice and demonstrate uh, these lesson one to four exercises using the application that I have online here. Okay, so uh, now, uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you will get access to this application. So on the introduction page, as well as on your Blackboard announcement, I put a link, which is at itchumber.cs services, services is student, academic application streaming services, which is right here. So you can either click on the link or you can copy the link that I posted on Blackboard and then paste it on the web browser. Then you're going to scroll down. There are different, there are seven schools that we have. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the, the business school and click on the standard right here. So when you click on a standard, it's gonna give you the access to the application. So now this access is only available for the Humber users and you are one of that as a student. So here you going you are going to enter your user information which is your user number and your password. Okay, and when you log in, you will see all the application that you that you can use as a Humber student. Okay? And say 300 is listed right here, so we're going to click on say 300. Okay, and it will take a few minutes, uh, maybe a few seconds, depending on your computer's, uh, your internet uh, speed. So since uh, uh, for the time being that's getting downloaded, so I'm gonna give you a background of this company file. So every, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, students who are not ha don't have the Sage 300 store, what you're gonna do is you will be practicing these chapters, these lessons using one of these, app, um, I mean, using this application. And uh, every every chapter that or every week that we're gonna do a new exercise 
I'm going to try to give you a new company and you had to go through the same process that, process that we're going in today. So in today's file, what I have done is I have created a company called Sam Event Planner Limited. And this is a new company that you started yourself. And you give a name, Sam Event Planner Limited, and I put XXX at the end. So that means that's going to be your first three initial of your first name, of your last name. So, so that way when you are setting up the name of the company, you're going to do that. So the background of this company is you started back in June and you decided to have two, uh, two departments. So your business focus on two different kinds of customers. One is uh, individuals and families. So you do a planning for them and then you do a corporate planning. So you're going to have two departments and then you started in June 2019. And you were doing the books using uh, uh, using the uh, Sage 50 before, and then starting 2020, you want to move everything to Sage 300. Okay, so that's company's background, and you are given an appendix at the bottom of the of the exercise with the with the trial balance for the company as of December 31st, 2019. So you we're gonna use the trial balance to do lesson three and four, which is setting up the accounts and the opening balance. Okay, so now uh, now we're back on the streaming services. So once you click Sage 300, okay, you will take one to two minutes to get your application downloaded on the streaming software. And once you come in, so the unique thing that you're gonna have to understand from this, so this is something that you have to bear in mind when you're working on this application, you not have access to your C drive, okay? So you're working on the, the software, I mean the application using the online browser. This is the company file, but the problem is that I was trying to avoid this application because anytime we're gonna open the file, these companies, you have all these companies set up for us. See, we have App, Chat, Fin, GLT, Omni, Sam, and Sam Inc. and Sam Limited. So all these companies, they are blank. There is nothing inside. So if I open any company from here, it's going to take you back from exercise 1.3 from chapter 1. So technically, when we even reach to lesson 7 or lesson 10 later on, you still have to create a company, you still have to create the accounts and do all kind of things, which takes a lot of time. But that is the only thing that we have to do is when we, whenever we're going to start this, we're going to do this as a demonstration of creating the whole company again. So when you are coming to practice this, you can understand that you're starting from the beginning all the time because I cannot perform database load on these files. That is the that is the disadvantage of using this application. But you don't have to worry about it for today's lecture because we are starting the company from scratch. So here what we're gonna do is for the exercise, we're gonna select the company called Sam Limited and then it's gonna ask you your session date and we're gonna use the session date as 0101-2020 because that's when we're starting the company. And see, it's taking us, so it's gonna say, oh, you don't have anything activated. We're gonna proceed with the administration services. And it's gonna ask you, you wanna start your fiscal year? Say, so we're gonna say yes. The it's only for common services. We're starting your fiscal year as of 01-2020. We're gonna click proceed. It's gonna ask you the company information. I don't need, I'm not gonna put the full name, but you will based on what I, so guys, when I'm doing this exercise, I'm doing it very quickly so that way I can demo, demonstrate all the exercises. But when you come in, you will be given the home practice exercise number three, which will have the steps that you need to perform. So you need to do that very carefully. You may need to refer to your test book to complete it. So here I'm gonna say, uh, Sam Event Planner Limited. I'll put my uh, my last initial C H A, and I'm not gonna go through putting the address. So you do. Okay. What's important is that I have to make sure I select the function currency as a Canadian. Okay. I will be going a little bit fast because I I know you have done lesson one and lesson two, and you must have heard the videos from there from the lecture as well. So here you are. You have you have the access to the company now, and if you want to change the name, you can go to Commerce Services and change it. The first exercise you are going to create uh, the 
uh, the schedule. So for schedule, I'm going to go comma services schedule, and I'm going to create a monthly schedule. I'm going to name this monthly. Okay, I'm going to make this a monthly. I'm going to say every month, and I'm going to make this available for all the users, and it's going to give them a notice three days before, and I'm going to get it started from 31st of December. Oh, sorry, 31st of January, and I'm going to say it's going to remind me on the last day of the month. Okay, so you have to select all this information. Once you're done, you click add. So my monthly schedule is added. Okay, and then what you're going to do is uh, now you are going to go. So this is typically was from lesson one, and then you're going to get into a lesson two. In lesson two, what you're going to do is uh, you are going to uh, activate the GL module. So you don't have a GL module. We're going to activate the GL module. So you're going to admin services, and we're going to say data activation. And we're going to proceed to activate the general ledger. Next, next, and activate. Okay, so now your general ledger is going to be activated right here. And then what you're going to do is uh, you are going to set up the GL. So you're going to click on GL setup and you have to go through all these different options depending on what I'm asking you to do. Okay. So to remember, even if you're doing your test as well, you will be asked to do the things in step by step. You cannot skip any of those because you may get into trouble later on. So you set up the GL module. So now GL module is ready. Uh, now what you're going to do is we're going to go through all these things. And this is exactly what was covered in your lesson two as well. So first, we start with the option. So we have various things here. And refer to your test book to see more detail. Here, what I'm going to do is I don't have the closing account. I will come back to it later on. Post theme, I'm going to change it to make it useful only for seven years. So store the information for seven years. Your current fiscal year is 2019. That's where you check it. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to create two different segments. Remember what I told you? You have two departments. So you have first one is going to be your account. So this is when you're creating the segments for your accounts. So you're going to have account as number one as your account numbers. And you're going to have the second one, which will be the departments. And that's what you're going to do is you're going to length of the digits. We're going to do three. And then here you're going to say default structure code. We don't have any, but you're going to select the account segment number one for your accounts and click save. Okay, so once you finish that, then what you're going to do is you're going to set up the two different departments. So we said the segment number one is the account. We don't need to define that. But the segment number two is the department. We need to define that one. So we're going to go into a segment codes. And here we're going to create these two codes. So 100 for the families. And 200 is going to be for corporates. Okay, see now it's only listing department because that's the number two. Okay, so now once we're done, we click add or save and then close it. Segments are created. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to create account structure. Okay, so we said, okay, there are two account segments. Now, who do you want the account structure is going to be? So I'm going to have the account structure. So we're using the similar process that we used in the uh, in the demonstration exercise in uh, home, uh, exercise home uh, home practice exercise one and two, but we're doing it for a new company. So first one is ACC account, and this should only have the accounts. And I'm going to click add. Then I'm going to create a second segment, which is going to be department. Okay. And that should start with the account number and it should end with the departments and click add and close. So now in your account structure, you have two account structure. One is ACC that should only have four digit. Then you have another one department, which will have account number and departments. And once you finish, you click close and that's where your account structure is going to be. Then we have a source code. Now source codes, as I told you guys, is pretty simple. All you do is just define the code. So we're going to say GLCR, 
for cash receipt. Okay, and I'm sure you guys still remember this and I've been telling you guys in my previous videos as well as in, in our online lecture is source codes are used to identify the transaction. So here we are simply creating them so that way when we record transaction in GL, we can select that to classify the transactions. We click one more. So there's two more we're gonna create. So a GL, general ledger, and CD represent cash disbursement. So this one is going to be used for cash disbursement. Add. And then last one we're gonna do is for bank charges. And here we're gonna do is bank charges click add okay so we created these three and then what i want you to do is i want you to create a source profile source journal profile to group these three into a bank reconciliation so i'm going to create a profile called bank reconciliation and then it's going to say which source codes that you want to set up for this profile i'm going to say bank charges one press insert go to the next line and then I'm going to select the disbursement as well press insert to go to the next line and then we're going to select the cash receipt because these three represent the bank transactions right so I'm going to have these ones put it there and I'm going to click add so now I have source journal profile as well okay so these are the important information that you need to know from chapter from lesson two there may be a few more that's that you need to know from theoretical purposes but these are the ones that you may be asked to complete in your test as well as in your assignment okay so once you finish that one what i want you to do is uh, in the test of the assignment you may be printing reports as well and now because if you're using the software here you may be using the uh, maybe downloading the files into one of these temporary folders and we need to export that into your C drive after. So I'm gonna show you how to print the reports and I'm sure you guys know this by now, GL reports, and we're gonna print two of them. One, we're gonna print is, is the segment codes. So here is your segment codes. I'm gonna click here and we'll say, before I do that, I'm gonna do a print destination to preview. Preview, paper was size, orientation, A4. Okay, and now we can click on segment codes. I'm gonna say all segments, print it. Once you click print, it's going to go up here and we're gonna say export it. And it's gonna export to PDF, press OK, all pages. And now it's gonna ask me a location. Now I cannot see my computer. What I see is if you will link that to your own OneDrive, I don't know how important it is because when I'm logging into OneDrive, it's linking me to a Humber OneDrive. So if you see that it is linking to OneDrive and you have access to this, you can do, use the OneDrive. But if you don't, you can just put into temporary files and name it exactly what I tell you. I will say R1 segment codes. Click save and then I'm going to close this. I'm going to print one more report that will be your source code. Print and export. Okay, now same location, it's going to be R2 and it's going to be source code save so now you have two reports that you saved okay and we're going to close this so that will be your fin that you finished up your uh, lesson two exercises okay now when you are doing this on this software you want to finish everything because you don't have a way to back this up and start from where you left so you must start from beginning and finish it up to the end Okay, so now what you're going to do is in uh, in the next exercise, you're going to go through creating the chart of accounts. You're given a trial balance on page number three. 
and then based on their chart balance, you need to prepare the chart of accounts. So now when you're preparing the chart of accounts, uh, you had looked at my my lecture and if you have not, you must listen to the lecture because it has a detail of all the steps that we have done in chapter. And students who don't have the software, you have to be paying attention to the detail over there because I'm not gonna go through that detail here. I will illustrate how to create an account, but if you wanna see a detail, you need to go through there. So here, this will be something similar to what you guys will do in your test as well. So you're given a trial balance and on based on the trial balance, you're gonna set up the accounts. So to set up the accounts, you come right here, you're gonna click on accounts. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create accounts. So it may take another five minutes for me to create the accounts, but I will do that right now. So I'm gonna say 1000. Now you guys are not given the account numbers, you are, but you need to understand how to set up the accounts, so you will assign the appropriate account number. So bank, I'm gonna say 1000, and I will select the source code as ACC, and it is gonna be a debit, and it's a balance sheet, okay? So I'm not gonna, so you guys can listen to, I mean, you can watch the video to see how I'm setting it up. So I'm gonna take another five minutes to set this up. So this is, belongs to cash, add, Like 1200 for accounts receivable. Okay, I'm gonna just take some shortcuts, but you do need to put the full names, and this belongs to AR. Add 1250 for. For I lost for not for debt, and it's the same concept. Okay, but the normal balance is credit for this. And we're gonna create thirteen hundred. So if you want to uh, leave some gap. For a future reference, you can do that. Okay, jam fixture. It's a debit and the category fixed assets. Assets. Then we're gonna have fifteen fifty and we're gonna call this accumulated depreciation when you can fixture normal is credit fixed assets we have the accumulated deposition account as well and then we have Fifteen fifty. We're gonna then we are done with the asset account, so we're gonna start the liability account. So we're gonna start with twenty one hundred. I'm gonna make that account as a bank loan, and it is a credit balance sheet, and this belongs to long term debt, long term liabilities, and. And then we're gonna have another account, accounts payable. We're gonna make this 2200. And we're gonna call this accounts payable, credit. Now this is not long term, it's going to be current liabilities. If we have accounts payable, we have accounts payable. So we select that, click add, 2200. Then we have uh, HSD account, so we're gonna Make this 2500 and we're gonna call this HSD on sales. And HSD on sales is a credit because the liability account. And I'm gonna make that this. And also, we're gonna have HSD on purchases 2550. And I'll make this a liability account as well. But we know that it is gonna have an opposite balance because this is the HSD on purchase account. Okay, then we're gonna have the next category is gonna be capital accounts. 
So the capital accounts, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this 3,000 series. So 3,000, make this first one is a shared capital. Okay, shared capital. And uh, you're going to illustrate this to uh, 3,000. And it is ACC, credit, adds a balance sheet. And what I'm going to do is, uh, it's a balance sheet, and we will have a common share equity, share capital. We select that as a share capital, and click Add. And I'm going to make this another account, 3500, and this is a European earning account. Okay, and so the credit, this one must be linked as a retained earning. And from this group, uh, we will put as a shareholders earnings. And then we click add. Then we have a, then we have some revenue and expenses accounts. So first one, we're going to create a revenue account. And now see how this is going to change. You're going to have four digit plus a three digit of your uh, of your uh, department so here I'm gonna make this a uh, revenue okay I'm gonna take a little shortcut but you still need to put in the name exactly what you see on your chart of account ACCT credit now this is income statement and this particular account is going to be my revenue account which is Count 15, add, this doesn't belong to a set, see this was message that you were getting because ACC should only accept the four digit, but now this is a department account, so therefore you have to change the structure code to department and click add. I'm going to create the same account, 200, and this will be for corporate. And then I'll create the expense accounts now. I'm going to have 40. So now we are going into the 5,000 series. 5,100 for my cost of sales, family. And now this will be a debit balance income statement. And we'll have a cost of sales, which is uh, purchases. It's not purchases, but uh, it's kind of a reflection of the same account. Add, and then I'm going to create 5,200 cost of sale for corporate. This, everything remains same. Click Add. Now I'm going to move into my operating expenses. So I'm going to make first one, I'm going to give a little bit of space. So I'm going to yeah, because I didn't click add, so you every time you go into a new account, it's always referred to the previous one. You must want to save it. 5200. Let me check what I have already. Okay, you don't need to watch this video to complete your stuff because you know it already. You should be able to complete that. So this was 5000. 200 I didn't save that so I have to make sure I save it Okay, now I'm gonna click I'm gonna do another one. This one will be 52 100 I'm gonna make this Telephone expenses For family department and this one is not my purchase, it's, it's actually pretty uh, expenses. You can either just put it to other expenses, that is fine as well. And then I'm going to create another account for 200 and this will be for corporate. Everything remains same. And then we're going to have one more operating expenses that we will just name it as 5300, 100 first call this auto expenses family other expenses is okay and we're gonna do auto expenses 200 and let's make this uh, corporate and then click add okay so now you have uh, all the accounts that you need for uh, based on the tripolis that you are given
Okay, you must create this accounts now versus later on because you have all the accounts that you need to start your transaction next year. Okay, so once you finish the chart of accounts, your accounts are ready. If you wanted to see it, you can double click on the chart of accounts. You will see the list of all the accounts that you created. There is no problem. You can change these accounts, their information anytime other than the account numbers. Now you guys see this, you have the ACC with the four digit and you have DIPT with the uh, four digits and the three digit of the departments. Okay, so once you finish this part, you are going to enter the opening balances. So to enter the opening balances, you go through the same process, GR transaction, batch listing, and you're going to create a new batch. And here we're going to region to a batch number one. And we're going to say, this is opening entry. And we're going to put the same description right here as well opening entry and it's going to ask you the document date remember what i told you guys in the lecture it is always going to be the date that you were in a previous year oops no it's not 2018 because we are in 2019 okay when you're completing omni you are entering it on december 31st 2018 because you were given a trial balance last year was 2018 but in this year your last fiscal year was 2019, so your balance is going to be 1231-2019, so always or it's going to be end of the fiscal period. And the source code, we can select whatever makes sense, whatever is appropriate in this. So we can just simply select the GL. So if we don't have a GL setup, we're going to select general ledger, just a regular one. Now you're going to have to do the entry with a debit and a credit, okay? So when I gave you a trial balance, what I told you that these accounts has a normal balance. And you guys in accountant, you know what their normal balance is, okay? So when you post these post digit and entry, what you're gonna do is you're gonna debit the account and credit the accounts. So here what you're gonna do is you're gonna select the account. It's account 1000, where bank account, normal balance is debit. So you go into a second line, you press insert. So you find the second account, which was uh, allowance for doubtful debt. Uh, that has a balance of 2850 debit as well press insert okay so you can see what I, what I'm doing and I'm sure you guys know this already now allowance has a normal balance of a credit press insert and your furniture fixture if you don't know the account number you can pre press on this uh, browser right here so when you click on the column it comes with this uh, finder button and then you click on that and then you'll see all the accounts and you pick the one that you want to pick and this one you have a 10,000 balance and then you insert go to the next line 1550 is your now allowance account or the accumulated deposition has a balance of a credit so you put that on a credit side press insert then you go open the bank uh, loan account and that has a credit bank loan is a liability has a balance of credit insert and then you have accounts payable account and uh, I don't remember the number so I can click on the finder you don't need to memorize the accounts you have this access so here is your accounts payable and the accounts payable is a credit as well so you put it on a credit side and then you're going to go into the HSD account and HSD on sales is the credit balance because HSD on sale is what you need to pay to CRA so it's 1200 and then you look at the HSD on purchases which is what you're going to get back from CRA so that is your debit balance then you have a share capital which is account number 3000 and your share capital has a balance of a credit 5000 and then you press insert go find the last account that you need to uh, put the balances which is 3500 retain earning and retain earning i'm not telling you but this is a if it's a earnings means it's the income that you are retaining in the company the balance is credit if you see a retained deficit that means that's the losses that you're carrying forward that should have a balance of a of a debit okay so in this one this is retained earnings has no balance of a credit so now once you finish the entry, you see this, you have a 23,000 of debit, 23,000 of a 
credit and your outer balance is zero therefore you should not get the error you click add your entry is added in batch number one so once you finish entering the journal entry and your account is balanced and you know that you have posted you're posting it on December uh, your posting date is January 1, December 31st 2019 the chances that you will get that posted right and there will be no error so if you're happy with your entry you can click right to post to yes and click post once you click post say posting sequence one is completed and the entry has been posted now you close it and you close your accounts as well once you finish this you have your trial balance up to date so now in this exercise what i'm telling you is once you finish entering the transaction and posting it into a gl what you need to do is you need to print me two more reports and those will be the last two reports that you're going to print and that will be your chart of accounts you can click on chart of accounts I want a detailed long form and click print and then here is your account with all the detail we're going to export this and click export PDF and we are still going to put it in the temporary folder this one we're going to name this is R3 and this is chart of account okay and then once you finish, you close this one. We're going to print one more report, which will be your trial balance. Okay, and then we're going to say, oh, I want this trial balance. But what date you want to select? You want to select the one that you that you did, which was December 31st, 2019. And click print. And once you click print, you will see your trial balance with your company name on it and everything else. And see this has a 23,000 debit and credit we can export this to a pdf and then once you export it you are going to name this as r4 and we're going to name this as a trial balance and click save okay once your file is saved you're happy you've done all the work and you can close this okay and now what we're going to do is the last step Number 13 is you're going to create a new fiscal year. So just remember one more thing, which I didn't put it in my exercise, but when you're creating a new fiscal year, you must set up a closing account before creating a new fiscal year. So to closing account, you, what you need to do is you are going to go under GL setup, go under the option and under the post, Thing. No, sorry, it's under the accounts. You're going to set up a default closing account, which is your retain earning account, and you click save. Okay, so now your closing account in this exercise is not going to play an important role because we have no revenue balances, we have no expense balances. Uh, but if, if there are, it will close it to a retain earning. So in this exercise, we set up the closing account, and the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to tell the system. To create a new fiscal year so with a new fiscal year it's going to move forward all the balances from December 2019 to January 1 2020 and it will open up a new fiscal year for us to record transactions so here we can come in priority processing create a new year and it's gonna give you a warning when I say it's okay we're gonna click process and it will create a new fiscal year. It gives you all the message that you received previously in your other exercises. And then you click close and you're done. And you close this. And now if you look at the GL options under the GL setup, and you will see your posting, your new fiscal year is 2020, your old is 2019. So now what you can do is you can close this and before you close your online stream software what you want to do is the the files that you have saved on this drive you must want to copy it to your c drive so before you copy it what you want to do is you want to go on a c drive and create a folder with this company name sam even planner and you can name it as sam even planner dash reporting reports then after you have this one 
so you can see this copy to local devices you can click on this one not right here so it's going to click on my files right here and you have two folders I never played around with the storage because it's uh, the way that it's reading is not linking to my Gmail so I'm not going to worry about I'm just going to put all the files in a temporary files and once I once I am done I click on the temporary files I click on the individual ones say okay, I'm going to say allow the pop-ups that way it's going to save this and it's going to give you so once you load the pop-up it's going to ask you to download it into your c drive under your uh, so let me click so once you click on it, it's going to save and it's going to save in your download i'm going to click on open and see it's actually downloading on my computer under the downloads okay it's depending on your computer settings how it is it will save it there as well i'm going to do the same thing with all the reports second one i'm going to click on that as well I'm going to say allow, always allow, so that means it's not going to give me that message again. I'm going to say click save, third one, save, and then the fourth one, click save. Okay, so once I've done all these four, so these four files will be saved on my C drive under the download. So I'm going to find that, I'm going to click open folder, I see all my four reports that I downloaded. So I will select all of them, cut it from here, right click, cut, and I'm going to go to my C drive, look for say 300 software, and in here I created a new folder, I'm going to name that new folder as SAM reports, and over here I put that file into that folder, so I paste it, I click paste or you can press control V. So once you have this one, these are your reports, and in the future, if I ask you to submit these reports, you can, but for this exercise, you're simply saving on a on your C drive so that way at least you know the process now. How do you how do you can how you can complete an exercise using the online stream software? And once you complete everything, you keep saving the reports as I'm asking you, and once you complete that, you are gonna copy those files from that temporary folder into your C drive. Okay. The last part is only in if you're doing that assignment or the test, you need to give me these reports and submit it in the Blackboard based on the assignment task, which I'll explain you guys in the next next class. Okay. So this is the end of the lecture. So what I'm expecting you guys to do is uh, go to your Blackboard, print out the home uh, the home practice exercise number three, and once you have that printed, you come into your online software extreme and log in and complete this exercise by yourself, okay? And this will illustrate your, your practice of lesson one to four, and it is an important exercise for the students who don't have the say 300 installed, and they have never done the, the software file, so this will be a good practice for you, and this will prepare you well for your test and the assignment that's gonna come up in next one or two weeks. Okay, so this is the end of the lecture, everybody. If you have any questions and concern, please feel free to send me a course message or and, or put that on a discussion board so everybody can see the question and answer it as well. And I will answer it whenever I have a chance to look at your discussion. Okay, so everybody have a, gay, a good day and, and a good week next week. And I will see you guys in the online class. Thank you. Bye-bye.